All right, welcome back to One Bills Live. Chris Brown, Steve Tasker, and the Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas joining us here in studio. Thurman, how you doing? doing Happy great. holidays. Yeah, same to you. Uh, and speaking of the holidays, uh, your family foundation has an event coming up. Holidays 2023, this oh, December 15th. Tell us about it. What's, what's going uh, on? I have a little event for our uh, Thurman Thomas and Family uh, Foundation uh, down at the Barrel Factory. Okay. Yeah. I've been there. Yep. Love that place. We had it there last year. Oh, it's in, great. In their little convention center. So, yeah, it's, uh, we're having it this Friday. we got about, mm, about 30 more tickets to go. So, right. you know, just okay. putting, a little, putting a little push in for the family yeah, yeah. foundation, you Good know. Stuff. Yeah. All yeah. right. So they can get their tickets, I'm guessing, online, right? Online, yes. Yeah. Online. So he's yeah. gonna, we're gonna we'll tweet, get a link we'll for you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll tweet the link out. Yeah. On so we'll, on our One Bills, Bills Live, Live handle, Twitter. we'll tweet Twitter. out how you can get tickets yeah. if you're interested in showing up What'd December you, 15th. So That's this Friday. Yeah. This Friday, man. Coming up fast. Yeah. yeah. Coming up fast. What do uh, what you think so much about the Bills? Uh, winning Kansas City and, and Kadarius Tony's not lining up offsides <laughs> and all that. You know what? <laughs> man. I, I, I figured everybody's kind of had their say about it. Sure. Mm-hmm. And hey, <laughs> My number one saying from that game, after that game, was how come Cook's not touching the ball in the second half? How's come, he's, how's, I, how's come Cook's not carrying, not the, carrying ball? the ball in the second yeah. half? So, so, I, so I have an answer for you because Joe Brady talked to the media yesterday and he was okay. asked about that. Um, and he basically said it had nothing to do with trying to get other players involved or anything like that. If you remember in the second half, after the field goal drive – which he was on the field for, mm-hmm. they go three and out, and they go three and out again. Now, you can argue part of the reason they went three and out was because Cook was not on the field, but he said we never really got in a rhythm on those next two possessions, and so they never got around to substituting and getting people in like Cook. To me, I would argue put him on the field to start the drive, right? Yeah. I but mean, that was kind of the reasoning from Joe Brady as to why it wasn't any. It had nothing to do with, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, we're not trying to get cooked the ball. Let's get other people involved. It was more, we never got the next two drives together, and then by the time you got to their next possession, you were already in the fourth quarter. Yeah, well, I, I can say when the, the but, first the first couple of drives, I mean, <clears throat> five out of six plays you threw the ball. Right, but to your point, <clears throat> and I said this yesterday, the guy touched the ball fifteen times and had one hundred and forty-one yards of total offense. He's got to touch it more. He's got to. He's <laughs> yeah. got to be up around twenty-five yeah, at the end of the game. We're thinking twenty is his thing. Right? Yeah, you got to give him twenty exactly. touches, throw, 20, pass. Yes. I don't care if it's nineteen catches and one run or tw- nineteen runs, one and if, catch. And if he's you do, you're probably score more than twenty points. And I'll say this too. Uh, see what you think about this. I because I after the game, I thought this at at first quarter and a half of that Chiefs game for the first time in five years since Josh has been the dude. There was somebody else who was the engine of the offense Absolutely. for a minute. Just for a minute. Yes, and it wasn't what, Steph. It, it wasn't Steph. <laughs> it was James Cook was the absolute engine. He caught it. He ran it. He did yep. everything. And for that minute or that stretch of the game, for the first time in all those years, you didn't have to have Josh Do it all. You know, step into the phone booth, put the cape on, and come back out and make a first down. You know Exactly. Um, I thought it was awesome. And I think that's kind of what happened in the second half. It was like we did so well with Cook. Kincaid and everybody. I mean, Diggs, what, had one right. or two catches? And they were kind of like screaming. He had four catches right. for yeah. 24 yards, a couple of drops in there. Yeah, a couple of drops in there. But, I mean, I, I've been saying it since the beginning of the season that this kid needs to touch the ball yeah. at least 15 or 20 times a game. Right. I've been on that train. I've been riding that train with you for about yeah. the past last month and a half. I mean, he can so catch it's the nice ball. To I, I think the only thing that you maybe worry about. Is maybe it's blitz, uh, blitz pickup. Yeah, I think that's why Murray that's is on the Murray field on the third, third down. down. Yeah, but you know what? Put him up on the line of scrimmage. I mean, well, there's you no reason to tell you me can't that have them both on like, the field, like right? Like the check down. Come on, you can't beat that linebacker. I know he can beat that linebacker. Yeah. There's just no way yeah. that he can stay. That even if you blitz, that's a perfect time to what? Well, on the screen, we ain't ran a screen all year long. Right. So, right. I think Cook has the advantage. It's just. If they blitz, he might not pick it up as well as Murray does. That's, right. that's but, my only. But to your yeah, point, but to your point, there's no reason that Murray and Cook can't be on the field at the same time on third down, and you just use Cook as a wide out, line him yeah, up wide. Exactly. I mean, you do that half the time yeah. he's on the you field. Use anyway. Gilliam yeah. a lot too, the fullback. So yeah. yeah, I mean, replace him with Murray. Yeah, what? And I think too that with Kincaid being as productive as he is, and Cook coming into that role as well, um, certainly that'll help Steph Diggs get back on track. Yeah. Because I think the one problem is, and I was talking about this, 
And you know what it's like. If you can't get, if you're always looking up and you got this guy on your face and then a guy right behind him, it's like you get beat up. I mean, like, golly, come on, man. Right. Give me, you know, let me play. Right. Um, and I think a little bit of that happens to Steph where he's like, man, I'm, they're taking me away. Can somebody do something with me over here with like nine guys guarding me? Could right. like the other two, somebody, somebody get open? Somebody got to get right. open. Right. And I think that there's did, a little bit of that going on. That yeah. didn't happen a ton. On Sunday, like separation was an issue for the receiving core. Yeah, I mean, that, I Cook mean, is your leading receiver with five catches I mean, for eighty-three look, you yards. Look at the Chiefs over the past couple; they've gotten better at defense. Oh, their back. defense is a strength. I of mean, their, their team defense now. is back. The backfield, the back yeah, part yeah. of they have gotten better considerably over the last well, couple. They of drafted years. Drafted three guys last year. Right. And they're all exactly. coming and into Snead, their own and now. Snead is good. Yes, he's very, very good. Yeah, and he and he's he might be what six footers. He's about six foot. Yeah. About six foot. So he's a bigger corner than we're probably used to seeing, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, get more players involved, man. It's uh, and, and I know Steph is like, man, I, I, I need some help. Yeah. And he probably not saying that, but, you know, we're, we're watching the game and we say the same thing. Right. And we right. say the same thing. So. Okay, so they get arguably the most difficult victory on the road at Arrowhead of the five remaining games that they had. Not that this one's going to be easy either with Dallas coming in. Um, but it feels as though – the team, just watching the players coming off the field, seeing them in the locker room after the game, there is this sense like, hey, we got one of the really tough ones out of the way here, and we got the win. Yeah. What does that do for the team going forward, do you think, knowing you got a really hard one that maybe not everybody thought you were going to get Yeah. You know, on this, on this run where you know you got to probably get them all? Yeah. Um, I mean, getting that. Getting that victory and seeing kind of Kansas City kind of explode there at the end or whatever, you know what? Mindset, you know, we we have the best record against them, like, yeah, during no, the regular season. That's their fourth th- regular season win there since McDermott took over. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody's so, beaten Mahomes no, three times yet. No. Except for us. Except the for Bills, us. Yeah. And so, yeah, hey, we took out the big boys. Hey, we should have won in Philly. Yeah, Dallas yeah. just – Destroyed Philly. Yeah, they they're were. coming in here, but they're going to be at home. We're going to be at home. Yeah, the Bills are a different, different. They're a different, they're a different team when when they're here in that stadium. Yeah. Man. It just is. I, I know the players feel it. Now you think about this: beat Dallas, Chargers, Back no Herbert. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. I'll say it's this: right there, it's right there. It's right there for this football team. Care this and one. I'm gonna tell you another thing too: the rally cry that those guys did. <laughs> I text uh, Coach McDermott. It was like. The old guys got your back. <laughs> That's right. They had his back yeah. in that football game. Yeah. In, in this show. In this show. Yeah. Sean McDermott was like a different coach almost over on the sidelines. I mean, it was You saw him it, smile on the sidelines. Right. Just standing there. Yeah. Just standing um, there smiling. Yeah. It was it was a different atmosphere. After the fourth down play you're talking about? No. No. It was through that, it was the whole the game. game. The whole okay. game. Yeah. Was, yeah. He had okay. smiles on his the, – they showed him, and he was – you know, either what he was listening to on the headsets or whatever they were talking, the conversation going back. He had, he was light. He seemed more lighthearted. Yeah. Um, and I also liked at the end of that game the the mentality they showed. Certainly, they're in that last two minute drill when uh, when they were going at the end of the game. We've talked about it a ton. Fans have been coming out. And why did they? Not, why didn't they run the ball? Get it to the two minute warning. Listen, on first down, they throw it right to Diggs. If he catches that. It's like a running play. He stays in right. bounds, and, right. but he drops it. And then the next play, it's a shot to the end. It's zone. a shot to the end zone. Not a high and, percentage. And I think shot. that's on Josh more than it is on um, yeah. on Brady. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then you know, the, then the incompletion that, and they didn't get to the two minute warning. They give those guys a chance right. to get back give them a in. Chance. Yeah. But I thought the aggression and that mentality of, particularly from the coaching staff, is put, given to the players. Listen, we're going to give you these plays. Get it done. Let's go. Yeah. Instead of coaching scared, mm-hmm. listen, we're not, we're not coaching a way that won't let you make mistakes yeah. is a totally different mindset. Did, you know, talk about what it means to a player when you know the coaches. You can feel it in the play call. <laughs> you can feel it everywhere. Yeah. You can, it's like whatever play call they call, it's going to work. Yeah. It's going to work. And you know what? I'm thinking the same thing. If coach call this play, our mindsets are thinking the same way. And it right. just goes through everybody. Yeah. It's right. just, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got this play. We've seen that play on film, scrimmage on Thursday or whatever. We yeah. know this play. You it can, just comes in. The, I mean, it, the comp, it just, confidence yeah. level yeah, goes the up. Because I people, never really saw, like, McDermott on the side. Because usually he's like, 
clapping and all yeah. that. No, no, no. It was doing this and like, yeah, right. I mean, he was really in the whole sideline. It's like interesting. It. Yeah, it's interesting too because you're right. You're in the, the huddle, and I, I wasn't in the huddle that much. But when you get in the huddle and you, they call this play, you think back, you can remember during the week the conversations you had when they installed the play. Say, here's what we're going to do, and here's why. Here's that, 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 that. So you remember all of that stuff. And say, oh yeah, yeah, all right. And you really feel prepared. And Marv used to say, your team is morale is the highest when you feel you're the most prepared. So when you make a call like that, and the guys are like, "Oh, that's exactly the call I was expecting," and man, oh man, it's it goes shoots your confidence mm. through the roof. I can remember a playoff game against Kansas City here. Uh, I think our first time we played the Chiefs. Uh, we're in a formation. Andre's in the slot. Uh, BB's on the outside, and Lofton's on the other side. And Jim called an audible. Knew exactly what. You can see like the players look up and go like. Oh, there's J.C. Pearson, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, number 24. <laughs> yeah, for the, yeah. He's one-on-one with Andre. Jim Changeable. And you just knew it. Yeah, it was going touch, to happen. It was I think that's a touchdown to the post. I think that's what these guys are feeling yeah. right now. Yeah. All right, Thurm. So Dallas is up next here at Highmark Stadium on Sunday. But as you know, they have some alpha dogs on that team, particularly on their defensive line. Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, Stephon Gilmore looks like he's found the fountain of youth. <laughs> oh he's playing God. great on the yeah. back end. <laughs> And that Duran Bland kid, who used to be their slot corner, has now moved outside since tra- they lost Trayvon Diggs for the year. And all he's got is five pick sixes on the season, which is already an NFL record. Yeah, I think, but the last couple of weeks have been getting kind of cooked lately. You think They've so? They've been putting them on one on one, more one on one coverage, okay. and uh, it hasn't been as good as good okay. as it was at the beginning of the year. I didn't, to be honest, with you, I didn't even know who he was. Mm-hmm. You know, not. Slap against him, but I just didn't know yeah. who he was and where he came from. Because right. you're thinking it's going to be Diggs or Hoy, and then some guy stepping in. But, but like you said again, though, Stefan is playing really, really well now yeah. at the age of what? 32. 32. I think yeah, and yeah, really good. I, I guarantee you, uh, AJ Brown won't call him old again. Yeah, that was a mistake, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> that was a mistake. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're, you're you're as much as you know. I know he was here. I mean, he's putting in. Pretty good numbers to oh, probably I th- be considered going to the Hall well, of Fame. I think he's a borderline player. candidate. He was yeah, sure. He, he is, was defensive yes. player of the year. Yeah. Uh, won Super Bowl with the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Um, was a little bit like those guys are, like Darrell Reeves, kind of at the end of their career, they're kind of mercenaries. They get they hop from team to team. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit like like Jalen Ramsey. Putting them in the best situation. You know, they, put, yep. they, they pick their spot and they they parachute in, make a difference on a team and, and, and Get good numbers. I think that's why he went to Dallas, thinking he's gonna have digs on the other side, right? Yeah, so yeah. that takes it off. So yeah, um, yeah, I think he's yeah, I, I think he's definitely in a conversation for Hall of yeah. Fame. No, no doubt about it. Linebacker level might be where the Bills have to exploit that Dallas defense because not only do you have to get it out quick, but you may be able to out athlete them at that second level. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's gonna be a tough one. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, with Lawrence and Parsons, I mean, it's, it's gonna be so crucial for our for 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 Brown, Spencer, and Dion to really, you know, set that stage early mm-hmm. in the game. You'll need some max protect mixed in there too. Yeah, I, I mean some chipping every now and then from the back coming out of the backfield or what have you. So yeah, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a dog fight with those guys. But you know what? Even with saying that, you know, like like we said, I mean when the Cowboys have faced a legit team, they have not played well. Yeah, they go up to San yeah. Fran and got whacked. Got whacked, and then and I'll say this too: Philly I, was <clears throat> it was okay, but yeah. you know against they the, lost by five on the road to Philly, twenty eight twenty three earlier in the season. Got them down in Dallas. It was a different story. Yeah, I wonder if um, how's my buddy doing, Michael Hyde? Is he day to week to week? Week, 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 to week. To week. Probably not going to make it this probably week. Probably not going to make it this so week. Probably looking at Taylor Rap. Yeah, so back there with Poyer because he, he, you know, I mean, obviously went against that offense mm-hmm. when they were in Green Bay. Yes, so. Yeah, right, but Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Rapp there. knows them too because exactly. he's been in the he's NFC. Been, yeah, so. so yeah, Dallas has struggled a little bit uh, on the road. Now, certainly opening day they beat the Giants forty to nothing on the road, mm. but then they lost on the road to Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. They lost to San Francisco big time. They lost to Philly big time. They beat the Chargers by three. Uh, by three. Yeah, that uh, was the shootout game. 41-38. They beat. They beat Carolina. Commanders. You know, uh, and now you know. So they haven't. You know, they've been at home for three straight. They've won them all. Yeah. Uh, four of their last five, they've been home. Jeez. And five of their it's last seven, they've been home. It's time for some cold weather, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Time this for is some cold be, weather. This is going to be, be, be slap them. 
Mike McCarthy said this, this is, is going, this, this is going to slap him. <laughs> Mike McCarthy said yesterday this will be a good test for us because it'll prepare us for the playoffs playing a team of this caliber. So there's respect there. Yeah. Um, speaking of respect, Therm, your good friend Rob Ray <laughs> is uh, recovering <laughs> after he took a puck to the to the noggin, to the noggin. while he was in the uh, the red line box for yesterday's Sabres game. Is the guy's it, trying to do his homework, consult his notes, and a puck gets flipped up, knocks him right between the eyes. Right between the eyes, I mean, too, dead man. center. Is the puck okay? <clears throat> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, the puck was puck a little look, bit dead. Looked like he was there. shaving his eyebrows. <laughs> he got a piece of toilet paper there, you know, cut himself with the razor. Funny, it, 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 Granato was asked about it this today, and to, uh, Don Granato? Donnie Granato said Rob Ray will be making the road trip, and he is day-to-day with an upper body <laughs> injury. So... So is the puck there, I, think <laughs> I, think it, I think you need to send him a Band-Aid. The puck the is out of play. The puck is out um, of play. The puck has been sent to the <laughs> right. The puck. to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, Rob. Hope you're doing better. And Rob, Rob gets two minutes for instigating. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> for getting in the way. Right. <laughs> yeah. What right. do we? That's interference. We get calling for interference. Uh, Therm, thanks for the time as always. Enjoy the game on Sunday. We'll catch up with you next week, and good luck with the event, the holidays event that you got with your family foundation on Friday. Thank you very at much. At the sir. Barrel Factory. And uh, like we said, we will post on One Bills Live where you can get your tickets for that holiday event.